Welcome to the screencast on numerical coordinate proof. For our first problem, we will use the three vertices shown below to determine what type of triangle we have. The first step will be to graph the three points. Their placement can be approximate, but I definitely recommend that you show both the points and their coordinates right on the graph. Pause the screencast while you do this problem along with me. Now that you've graphed your points and drawn the triangle, go ahead and check it against the graph I have off to the right. You can pause the screencast again in order to check this. Once you've completed your graph, the next step is to form a plan for how you're going to classify this triangle. This is called forming a proof plan. You can see what I'm planning to do is to calculate the length of each side using the distance formula. Basically, it's the side lengths that tell us if we have an equilateral isosceles or a scalene triangle. Though an equilateral triangle can't contain a right angle also, the other two types of triangles can also contain a right angle. I always want to classify the triangle as specifically as possible. So if it ends up being an isosceles triangle, and if it also has a right angle, I would want to say it's a right isosceles triangle. When you write your coordinate proofs, you will also include an explanation like what I've shown in red that explains to somebody else where you're planning to go with this, how you're going to go about classifying this triangle. Notice I've said show all of the work because the purpose of a proof is to convince somebody else of your conclusion. So you need to have all your work shown so they can be convinced of what you're saying. To help someone follow your proof, you're going to want to label any kind of setup that you have. Notice that I've written the distance formula off to the right. To find the length of AB, AB is equal to the square root of, and my setup is going to be parentheses, and this is the difference of the x's, so negative 2 minus 5 squared plus the difference of the y's, which is 4 minus 1 squared. Now it's time to simplify what I have, so it's going to be the square root of negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7 squared, plus and then 4 minus 1 is 3 squared, so it ends up equaling square root of 49 plus 9 underneath the square root sign, which is equal to the square root of 58. Now I know that we can use our calculator to approximate the square root of 58, but there's no need to. In fact, it's best to leave the square root in your answer whenever the number underneath the square root sign is not a perfect square. Now it's time to find the length of BD. So BD is equal to the square root of, and that's going to be 5 minus 2, in parentheses, squared plus, and then for the y's is going to be 1 minus a minus 6, quantity squared. So now simplifying. 5 minus 2 is 3 squared. And then remember that minus a minus becomes a plus, so it ends up being plus 7 squared. And that's equal to 9 plus 49, which again is going to give us a square root of 58 for our final length of that side. Let's find the length of AD. And AD is going to be equal to the square root of negative 2 minus 2 plus, and then 4 minus a minus 6, quantity squared. And now to simplify that, we have the negative 2 minus 2 more is a negative 4 squared 
plus, and then we have 4 minus a minus 6, which again changes to a plus sign, so that's 10 squared. And now that's equal to the square root of 16 plus 100 equals the square root of 116. Again, 116 is not a perfect square, so we'll leave it just like that. Once I have found the three lengths, I often like to write them right on the diagram. So I'll put my root 58 here and my root 58 right here as well. And this ended up being a different length, which was root 116. So basically, I can see I have an isosceles triangle. If you remember right, an isosceles triangle means two or more sides equal. And whenever you have two sides equal, the base angles have to be the same. Well, there's no way that these base angles right here could both be 90 degree angles because it would force the triangle to have more than 180 degrees. So when you have an isosceles triangle, the only angle that could possibly be 90 is the one between the two congruent sides. Notice I've written the Pythagorean theorem at the top of the screen. So basically, this is the only angle that is possibly going to be a right angle because it's the one between the two congruent sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this long side here as though it were a hypotenuse and see if these three numbers make a true statement when tried in the Pythagorean theorem. So I've got root 58 squared plus root 58 squared. Remember the hypotenuse or the one you treat as a possible hypotenuse always has to go in for C. 116 squared. And when you square, basically the squaring and the square root will undo each other because they're inverse processes. So what it means is I'll get 58 plus 58 equals 116. If you take a calculator and check that, you will see that that is actually a true statement. Now all that's left is to finish your proof by making your conclusion. You would actually state in words that this was an isosceles right triangle because it has two congruent sides and a right angle. I hope this screencast was helpful and here is a problem for you to try on your own and bring to class.